Welcome to the Simply Smart Business Show with me, Gemma Went. Hello, hello, hello. And we are back for one of my amazing strategy sessions, what I'm really enjoying, where I get to jump on here uh, and talk strategy with uh, some lovely people who have signed up for this. Some of them my clients, some of them people in my Simply Smart business group and the idea is basically we're going to discuss the one thing that's kind of holding them back in business right now and just see if we can come up with some strategic ideas to take them forward so today i am with messaging strategist anna mclaughlin who is one of my clients who i've worked with on and off for quite some time um anna before we start would you mind introducing yourself to everybody and what you do i will so so my name is anna and my business is ink spiller and we help people bottle their brilliance. So we work with service-based companies of all kinds, um, lots of coaches and consultants, lots of creative agencies and digital agencies, but even some doctors and property developers, anyone who sells a service, we help them get the knowledge out of their experts' heads and into words um, and words that sell. So that's why I call myself a messaging Mm, strategist. It's such an important service uh, because so few people are able to do this. And I've seen, obviously from your work and then in my own work, I've seen the massive change once you really take this seriously and you start applying this to your business. Um, Fantastic. So tell us what you would love us to talk about today. What can we help you with? So I have had um, limited success in scaling the business so far so I've got them so there are um, I do have a very small team but Mm. I am still the bottleneck it's still really things haven't although I have got a team things I've things haven't changed so much from when I was just a freelancer Mm. it's not it's not that it's not as different as it should be and I want to be able to scale the business so I can step more into the CEO role yeah. And, and have other people, um, you know, serving and delighting clients as much as I do. And this is something I haven't had great success with. And, but also, I just don't know the roadmap for it. So I'm hoping yeah. you can help, help me kind of figure out, especially like what would be the next few steps I should take along this journey (laughs) yeah yeah absolutely love this one it's such a great topic so can you tell us what you have done or what you've tried so far and what's worked and what hasn't worked for you okay so I have um I have got some business processes I'm whoops just the camera's gone (laughs) I'm sorry uh so I have, you know, I have got some onboarding processes and things like that and client questionnaires and things like that, which are sort of processed and scaled, but they, they could be better. Um, I do have a few good writers that I can outsource copywriting to, and I have uh, great people I can outsource social media to because often, so once I help clients kind of bottle their brilliance in a message it's about getting out there and so Mm. I do then help with a lot I also then end up helping with content marketing social media so Mm. happy with that but I'm I haven't really found anybody who can do the kind of messaging stuff that I do and I would and I just don't know really how to go about finding and hiring those people Um, and so that's been a bit hit and miss okay all right brilliant um so that's so that's that side of it yeah yeah okay carry on and any anything else um well I think I do get a I do seem to be quite good at getting a lot of leads in because I have been doing the business quite a while so I mean I think that can always be improved like lead generation marketing and sales I think that's something you can never stop doing and you can always Mm. get better at so there's that as well um I think those are the main things that are on top of my mind but I'm sure there's things I've missed that you can (laughs) help me with can we talk a little bit about where you are spending your time in the business? So let's just do a real quick off the top of your head breakdown. Um, mm. Think about a really typical week for you and where yeah. you're spending most of your time and, and literally include everything that you're doing in your business in this. So I would say that I'm spending, um, are we, do you want to break it down by percentages or like by hours? Um, whatever works for you. Cause it doesn't have to be exact. Just whatever works for you. 
So I think I'm spending, I'd say I'm spending like four to five hours a day actually doing work for clients, like consultancy work. Sometimes that's a little bit more. So there might be days where I'm doing, you know, two, like two, eight mm. hour days doing that. Um, but generally I would say it's about half a day because I actually find I'm not as productive or creative if I spend more than that. So it's, ideally it would be like four to five hours. And then the other like, you know, three, four hours a day, it's, it's dealing with um, proposals, um, inquiries, making sure, checking in with people, making sure things are going well. Um, and so I'd say, yeah, I'd say that's like another, two, yeah, say that's another two to three. And then say that I'm spending like maybe an hour or two a day on the kind of marketing and growth and sales and the rest of it. Okay. Okay. Awesome. What about other areas of just kind of like admin and, and stuff like that? Well, I do have, um, I do have um, an assistant that helps me. So she's doing a lot of that kind of stuff. So she's working like two days a week, something like that. Okay. On, and well, she's enough. helping, she's helping with clients as well, actually. So um, yeah. Okay, so cool. And um, do you mind sharing where you're at with your kind of your um, average monthly income at the moment? What sort of levels you're so at? So it's, it's around, around £8,000 a month, something like that. Um, sometimes it's a little bit less, sometimes it's more. Yeah, so, but yeah, it, yeah. averaging, it's averaging. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And have you worked out um, what you need to be earning to keep your business ticking over? So paying you the salary that you want, paying your assistant, is it just one, one person you've got working with? You well, I do, I do have other people that are um, <clears throat> working as, you know, consultants ad hoc um you know just so as those freelancers are just, those covered by your um income for a consultancy project and then yeah totally yeah but that's very like i said i don't have i would <clears> like <throat> to hire more people more often but uh, but those are that is kind of ad hoc at the moment yeah um okay. so in terms of what i'd need what i need to run i think it's about six thousand pounds a month or something like that yeah. um basics and then but obviously the more I can earn, the more money I have freed up to hire someone, mm. um, which is, yeah, which is, yeah, obviously I'm very keen to do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And it is, it's difficult, isn't it? Because it's kind of like uh, a catch 22 because you want to do mm. more work to increase the income, but you actually haven't got enough time yet and you haven't found yeah. to lose some of that stuff and give it to. So you get very stuck at that point. And I remember, I remember it well. I, I remember being there as well. Well, this is exactly why I haven't managed to <laughs> move it on or crack this conundrum so far. Um, mm -hmm. Exactly that, because it's just, the I sometimes feel like I'm just on a hamster wheel yeah of, of keeping everything going and keeping all the balls in the air it was I'm really badly mixing my metaphors here I'm like a <laughs> I'm a juggling hamster <laughs> but do you know juggling hamster here. I'm a juggling hamster but do you know what I mean I I was just like oh I've got to keep it keep it going keep it going yeah. keep it going yeah. and and then in between in those little cracks of time I'm trying to move it on and change it i mean one thing i would say is i have managed to definitely sort of grow in income and improve marketing so, so things are improving but i'm but yeah it's so incremental and i and i just want to now be using my time more effectively so i can actually be growing things in the right direction yeah yeah i get that right talk us through at the moment your um services so what what is your product roadmap your service roadmap at the moment what do you have on offer so it's quite simple really because i'm selling consultancy so yeah. that's my that's the main product and then so there's consultancy which is that could be that is so bespoke i'm mm. um, really for each project so each project can be fairly unique but if you're breaking it down it, it's selling days of time yeah and then i also do i also do some workshops so I'll do um writing workshops sometimes because I've I've been a copywriter for a really really long time I'm um, yes. so nearly you know nearly 18 years so I also do writing workshops that's another product and also brand messaging workshop brand values workshops I'm going into organizations and just bringing the team together and helping everyone see what's so amazing about their business I'm that's that's another product um I also do content marketing so I'll help people create 
I use what bottle of brilliance into a, a lead magnet and then then that will include some emails um landing page copy all the rest and that's a very sort of small that's a small little product and then I also have and I also do um finally I do smaller products with sort of one one woman bands usually yeah. I'm helping it's a you know it's a one it's a virtual workshop and then I help them create the message and sometimes a little bit of copy as well and that's pro- that's probably my lowest offer that's like a, a one day less than a day and I'll and I'll mm. do one about one or two of those a week okay so yeah where do you think at the moment um out of that um that service roadmap that you have there which do you think is the most popular not not what you're earning your money from but which okay. do you think is the most popular i think the thing that people resonate most with is is the idea of getting the message right so whether that's doing a workshop so doing if it's a team then that's you know it's an in-person workshop and going in to do that or it's one-to-one it's the um which is what I call the epiphany session it's the Mm. one-to-one messaging workshop that's what because it's so so hard to do it for yourself I think it is yeah it's so difficult I think everybody will try and try and try and then be like ah this is holding me back. I can't do it. Um, yeah. So I would say that's, and also that's the thing that I enjoy the most. So. Yeah. And do you do, do you do a group offer with that? So you can have a group of them come I, and maybe spend a day with you, do a full day virtual group experience where you take them through that. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> that might be a good idea. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just, because I'm obviously really, really, um, you're very much focused on time for. Like, I am. I am. And yeah. we just need to see. And I'm not. I'm not. You know, I'm not one of the coaches that says, "Oh, you have to build a course." Because it, it's not about that. Mm. But it's about taking what you have and packaging it in different ways. It's going to allow you to earn more, to pay the team to do the other stuff. Mm. Um, and then build the business. So I'm just seeing what opportunities there are there. Okay, so let me have a look at this. I think that um, I think that where you're spending your time, it really feels like you've obviously got an assistant to do the admin stuff, and that is brilliant. And keep hold of that because that's gold dust. But I'm wondering if there is a space there for someone to handle the customer service stuff. So the proposals, the chasing that up, the um, inquiries and fielding all of that stuff because that can take an awful lot of time. It uh, does, yeah. And I, So I would probably start auditing that area of your business. Like, what are you doing? What are you using? Is there a better system for it? I think we spoke um, a little while ago about using something like Dubsado, which is a tool that kind of has everything in it, sort of proposals and invoicing and a CRM system. Um, but I would look at what you're using and where you're spending your time. See if you can um, cut back on the time in that area and then have a think about what that person could do. And it feels like a customer service kind of role that could expand later, but it's someone that can deal, you're really comfortable with them dealing with inquiries and clients and chasing things up for you so that you're not doing any of those things so it feels like there's a there is a definite role there for you um and you've already got your admin assistant working on some other things so that is great in terms of the consultants one thing that did pop into my head because this is how you will scale specifically with the um the consultancy side of the business um I think that if you can create, and I don't know if you've done this already, so do tell me if you have, your framework for this stuff. So your really specific messaging framework that you follow when you do each of these projects. Now, I know you said they're very bespoke, but if you can kind of have, find some common themes to create an overarching framework, And you know where you said you've really struggled to hire the people to to handle that side of things? I think you train them. Mm. 
and actually they come on board and it's almost like they're kind of getting a, a messaging certification from you mm. that then they follow that framework and it's you name it it's yours they go through that process before they can work on your behalf and then they do that for you yeah it's that almost like they, they yeah. become your kind of your messaging specialists that you can use for other um uh, other clients that you don't work with um and i think you know you could certainly think about mapping that out what that could look like and you could start with one person just start with one person train them up get them to go through that process um and see how that works because that should relieve you a little bit what do you think about that yeah i think that's i think that would work really well and i do have i do definitely have a framework um, i just yeah. haven't i haven't um codified it in such a way that i could mm. pass it to someone else but i definitely have there's definitely like five things i look at when i work with any client it's always five isn't it <laughs> in any way it's always it's always three or five but no it but there are there are five things and um for sure i could i could codify that in order to teach it because you know some of the issue for you might be that in the past these people just don't quite measure up to your level of doing things and your way of doing things. And that's really difficult when you're running a business because mm. you don't want it to affect your brand and the quality of your output. So for me, the best way to deal with that is to create that framework, really tight framework and train people to actually do it on your behalf. And that yeah. allows you to step back. So I would certainly look at that for the consultancy side of things. Um, and because obviously to, to take people on, you're going to need to increase that income that can then yep. later free you up to do more things, more income generating things. So certainly for, uh, um, for the services, you can look to do that. But I also, and also look at your pricing to make sure that that it might need a tweak. There yeah. might be a higher my level. price. My pricing's too low. I do know that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I've, re so I've realized this recently. I'm going to yeah. run through the priorities. That's yeah. like number one. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely look at that pricing. And you might want to um, have different levels of it. So yeah. look at what you offer and have sort of a, a higher level, more intensive, strategic offer. And then the next one and then the next one. I normally come up with kind of three levels yeah. for like that uh, but i would really look at that because your priority is to get more money in to cover yeah. your team to allow you to free yourself up and then earn even more money but it's it's that first bit it's that bridge mm, from yeah. having enough to pay them you're still not quite earning enough yet because you've not had the time to go out there and do it so it's the quick wins it's increasing yeah. pricing, getting that in um, to, to help cover that time. And then you're doing more income generating activities to um, scale the business. I yeah. would also, and that the idea I, I came up with earlier when we were talking about your, um, your messaging services, I think a group intensive mm. for a day yeah. would be amazing for that group. Like you, you were talking about the one woman bands, the smaller businesses. Yeah actually one group intensive that you can charge a really good price for and they they come in and they have nothing they might they might have some pre-work so if you think about you know you might send them um, a document to fill in to do some research that you might ask them to look at their competitors and what they're saying out out in the field you might get them to dig into things like their values all the stuff that you really think about so they do some pre-work then they have a full intensive day and then they go away with really clear things at the end of that day so at the end of the yeah. day you will have this 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 and this done yeah so there's some really clear deliverables now i think you could charge a, a decent amount for that and i think that's really needed yeah and and also if you did it for a whole day actually because often you know what we do in the workshop that's that's just me digging into it and then i'll go away and do the work but actually mm -hmm. if you do a whole day there's so much you could actually there's so much you could cover. Yeah. It could be it could be really exciting. Yeah, you could do I, it. Could be really fun, and you could yeah. There's so much you could do.
Yeah, and you can, be you, really know, good. you can have them going away for an hour to write some stuff so they're not all sort of sitting on Zoom together. Well, yeah, yeah. You know, so they can go away, they come back, there's a review. You know, you could do that really beautifully. You could even mm. do some in-person ones for people that are in the UK and it's easier for them to do it. You would up the price to cover the costs of, of the venue and food and stuff like that. Well, I really do. I mean, my, I've always loved in-person workshops, yeah. really. And I just feel, because you can just be so much more tactile and creative with yeah. it. So preferably, I would really love to do an in-person one. It's just, I just know that logistically then. Logistically, it's a bit, you're it's getting, harder, yeah. but yeah, but, exactly. yeah I, I think the experience would be better. But could you imagine if you added into your sort of your product, your service roadmap, running one of those every month? So you run them every month. You have some, a really nice evergreen marketing funnel, mm. putting that out there, adding in the testimonials from people that have been on it previously, constantly bringing people into that. You probably don't need that many women in there or, or whoever you're going to go to. Yeah. It probably isn't just for women, to be honest. You can open that out to, yeah. to men that have smaller businesses. Um, and you probably don't need that many on it to, because you probably don't want to have that many, uh, too many people on it because you want to be able to serve them and yeah. speak to them. So actually, totally. it's not a hard sell, but you can make a decent amount of money out of one of those every month. That yeah. might cover the cost of someone coming in and doing all your customer service stuff. Yes, that sounds brilliant. I don't know why I've never thought about doing this before. <laughs> <laughs> because now you just say you know well it's right in front of you we never it is we never it is it. yeah no i can because as you're saying it it's in my head i can picture exactly how it would go and what we would do and yeah Ooh. yeah it's and exciting the one is a higher price and it's and and you know yeah. you can really go deep in the in-person ones and it can be yeah. really really nice you could even have other people there creating some copy for people or helping them, you know, you might have someone helping them with mm. social media images or, you know, something else as well. That's a good idea. Really add in with that. But I think by doing, cause for me, when you're looking at these kind of things, you need that, that quick injection of income to cover outsourcing some stuff so that you're not, you're not really tight in that time and you're kind of yeah. really stressful. And then that frees you up to develop the business really look at your services and how you can improve those you might need to um add in something else there you can put up your pricing and then you can really focus on revenue generating and then um servicing your clients while everyone else well, you're, well the rest of your team is looking after the other stuff yeah no definitely yes it does that's definitely what I need to do. And it's interesting because talking to you I can see now why I haven't done it because as you said it's just that the tightness of that time yeah, doesn't actually kind of let you look up <laughs> yeah. and and see what's possible um but yeah no it does that really does make sense and i That's yeah really i good idea. see that working beautifully for you so in terms of because you did want to have some right clear steps what do i do next mm -hmm. what i would do in this situation if i was you number one i would look at my pricing Mm -hmm. see where yeah. that might be falling down where you might need to bring that up where you might need to repackage a few things yeah um, and tweak that so that that's bringing in the right level of income for each of those services I would do a bigger audit on where you're spending your time mm. and really yeah. think about is that the role is that the next role that needs to be filled is it that customer service person you might do a deeper audit and then mm. think, oh, actually, I think it's somebody else. It might be something else. So do that yeah. deep audit. It's about where you're spending your time and where you can free yourself up. Once you've done that audit and you think about who that person is, you can then start to think about, well, how much do I think that's going to cost? You can start mm. to work out that that's probably around four or five hours a week or whatever it is. It's probably going to be this amount, an hour to pay someone. Then I'm looking at this. So you have a really good idea of what that is is going to be to free you up and then I would look at doing that group workshop and getting that out because I think getting that out because you're not gonna to have to do a lot of work it's not creating anything new it's not like a, a training course or any of those things it's just doing what you do and packaging it up differently I would look at creating that and then launching that 
and looking to create a really lovely evergreen marketing system to keep on selling that every month because that will hopefully bring in that a really nice chunk of income that can cover yeah. things while you're then able to free yourself up and look at more income generating kind of more innovative stuff in the business that so you can really start yeah because be you're a creative I know and that's what I'm really hungry to be doing I yeah. do I so want the time to yeah to to be more creative for myself which mm. I obviously don't get to do so yeah no for sure um yeah, yeah. oh and a lot of that you know, <laughs> in the next three months if you set yourself a, a, a task in the next three months to do the, um, the pricing review mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the audit and work out who you need and at least create that workshop and maybe create the launch activity and start to get that out there, those three things feel like they're, they're going to really kind of help you step towards what you're looking to do. Yeah, totally. They really would. Yeah, awesome. I love that. Gemma. I'm excited. <laughs> Me too. I like I said, I can't believe like that now you said it, it's really quite obvious. I don't know why I've <laughs> not spotted it before. But yeah, no, that's brilliant. Thank you. Really, you really, are really so helpful. Welcome. I look forward to seeing all your stuff about it. <laughs> Thank you.